Now that we've gone through some of the common types of contact and non-contact forces, let's discuss the concept of net force. Under any circumstance, an object can be acted upon by one or more forces. For example, an object can be acted upon by weight force, normal force, and frictional forces all at the same time. This is where net force comes in. The net force is a sum of all the forces that's present or is acting on the object after accounting for the direction. Remember that forces are not simply magnitudes of newtons, they also include the direction. In order to calculate net forces, we need to employ skills of vector addition and also subtraction. Here we have two examples of forces acting on a mass. In the first example on the left hand side, we have a 100 Newton force acting towards the left and a 150 Newton force acting towards the right. Since the two force vectors are already in the same horizontal direction, either left or right, we can use vector addition to find the net force straight away. Before adding force vectors, it is important to define the positive direction and also the negative direction. Typically, the right hand side is represented by the positive direction and the left-hand side is represented by the negative direction. So in this case, the net force is given by positive 150 newtons minus 100 newtons, and this gives a net force of 50 newtons to the right. The direction is to the right because the final answer from the calculation is positive 50, and the positive sign indicates that the net force is going to the right. The example on the right-hand side is very similar. We have two force vectors acting in the vertical direction, 80 newtons acting upwards and 200 newtons acting downward. Again, before we perform calculations, it is important to define the positive direction, which is usually upwards, and the negative direction, which is usually downward. The net force in this example is equal to 80 newtons upwards minus 200 newtons acting downward. And this gives an answer of minus 120 newtons and this is the same as saying 120 newtons downward. Sometimes the force vectors acting on a mass may not be horizontal nor vertical. For example, on top of the 100 newton horizontal force and the 80 newton vertical force, we have an, an, another force acting at an angle of 40 degrees above the horizontal line, and this is 150 newtons. Before we can perform vector addition, we need to first resolve this force vector that is at an angle. To resolve the force vector, keep in mind that the original vector must remain as a hypotenuse of a right angle triangle, and the resolved components are perpendicular. In this case, the 150 newtons can be resolved into a horizontal component and a vertical component, such that the two components are perpendicular and they form the two other sides of the right angle triangle. The horizontal component here is given by 150 cosine 40 degrees and the vertical component is given by 150 sine 40 degrees as it is the opposite side to the angle. Now that we have resolved the force vector into its perpendicular components, we can add the vectors in the horizontal plane and the vectors in the vertical plane separately. Let's look at the horizontal vectors first. Again, the right hand side is represented by a positive the left hand side is given by the negative sign. The net force in the horizontal direction is given by 150 cosine 40 degrees, which is the force vector acting towards the right hand side, minus 100 newtons, which is the horizontal vector acting towards the left side. This gives a net force of 14.9 newtons to the right, as it is a positive answer. Let's now look at the vertical vectors. The net force in the vertical direction is given by upward or downward forces. Again, upward is positive, downward is denoted by negative. This will equal to the upward vertical component of the 150 newtons, so that is 150 sine 40 degrees minus 80 newtons as it is acting downward. This gives an answer of 16.4 newtons upward as it is a positive answer. Now that we have calculated the net forces in horizontal and vertical direction, we can combine the force vectors again to form one single net force vector. So we have horizontal net force of 14.9 to the right 
and a vertical net force vector of upwards 16.4 newtons. We can then add the two vectors by forming a hypotenuse from the tail of the first vector to the head of the second vector to find the combined net force. Let's call this F. We can then use Pythagoras theorem to find F. F squared equals to 14.9 squared plus 16.4 squared. F equals to the square root of 14.9 squared plus 16.4 squared. This gives a magnitude of net force of 22.2 newtons. Now remember that forces are vectors, so in addition to providing a magnitude in newtons, we also need to describe the direction of this net force vector. This can be described by finding the angle between the red force vector and the blue horizontal net force. So tangent theta is equal to the opposite side, 16.4, divided by the adjacent side, which is 14.9. Theta equals 48 degrees. So my force vector is 22.2 newtons in the upright direction, precisely 48 degrees above the horizontal. Let's go through some examples of analyzing forces acting on objects in different scenarios. We have a 10 kilogram box that is resting on a flat bench top. Now assuming this bench top and the box is on the surface of earth, there's going to be a weight force that acts towards the ground and this is given by mg, the mass of the box times by the gravitational acceleration. So we can further deduce this by saying the mass of the box is 10 kilograms multiplied by the gravitational acceleration due to Earth, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. And this gives 980 newtons downward. Remember, it is important to include a direction. Since the box is in contact with the bench top, there's also a normal force that acts upwards, away from the surface, but perpendicular to it. So this is the normal force. The normal force is present to prevent the box from going through the bench top. The net force is equal to the upward normal force, which we'll call N, minus the downward weight force, which we'll describe as Mg. Here, I've put a negative sign in front of mg because forces are vectors which have direction. Usually, when the force is acting upwards, we describe that as a positive force, and when forces are acting downward, we describe that as a negative force, hence why it's minus mg. In this instance, because the box is sitting at rest on the bench top and it is not moving, the net force on the object is zero. So zero is equal to normal force minus 980 newtons, which we found earlier for the weight force. And this means the normal force is 980 newtons upwards. In this case, if the weight force is greater than the normal force, this means that the box is too heavy for the bench top and the bench top will start to break, which will then lead to the box falling through the bench top onto the ground. Conversely, if the normal force, for whatever reason, is greater than the weight force, that, that tells us that the box will actually start to go upwards away from the bench top, which is a very unlikely phenomenon. So since the box is resting peacefully on the bench top without falling through it onto the ground, the net force acting in this vertical dimension, so either up or down, is equal to zero newtons. A person exerts an 1,000 newton force towards the right so this is the applied force on the box, which is 1,000 newtons towards the right. On the flat surface, the kinetic friction coefficient between the surface and the box is 0.8. So this is my mu k value equals to 0.8. Now, since the box is in a gravitational field, it will experience a weight force going down, and this is equal to mg. The mass of the object, which is 50 kilograms, multiplied by gravity, or the gravitational acceleration. Since the box is in contact with the flat surface while it's moving, it's also experiencing a normal force that acts upwards, perpendicular to the surface. Let's call this N. And finally, because there's relative motion between the box and the surface, we'll have a kinetic frictional force acting towards the left, opposite to the direction of the applied force, which was 1000 newtons. 
Let's call this F lowercase k, kinetic frictional force. Now, the idea of net force can be calculated in two different dimensions. We have the vertical vectors of forces and also the horizontal ones. In the vertical direction, the net force is equal to the normal force, which is acting upwards, minus the weight force, which is equal to mg. And we know that there's no motion in the vertical direction as the box is purely being pushed horizontally towards the right. The net force in the vertical direction is simply zero. So zero is equal to the normal force minus the weight force, which is 50 kilograms multiplied by 9.8 meters per second squared. That means the normal force is equal to 490 newtons upwards. Now, let's look at the forces in the horizontal direction, which includes the applied force and the kinetic frictional force. We know that the kinetic frictional force is equal to the kinetic frictional coefficient, mu k, multiplied by the normal force. The coefficient given by the question for the surface is 0 0.8, and the normal force as we calculated in the vertical direction is 490 newtons. This gives a value of 392 newtons to the left. So the net force acting in the horizontal direction is equal to the applied force minus the kinetic frictional force. The applied force is 1000 newtons to the right and the kinetic friction is 392 newtons towards the left. In this instance, forces that act towards the right are positive and forces that act in the, towards the left are negative, hence why I've written negative 392. And this gives a value of 608 newtons to the right. This is the net force in the horizontal direction. So the idea of net forces also has a concept of direction or dimension. You should break this down into net forces acting in the vertical direction as well as the horizontal direction. In this question, the vertical net forces is zero because the normal force equals to the magnitude of the weight force. Whereas the net force acting in the horizontal direction is 608 newtons towards the right. A person applies a 150 newton force on a 20 kilogram box along a flat surface at an angle of 30 degrees above the ground as shown. The surface has a kinetic friction coefficient of 0.6. So here we have an applied force of 150 newtons at 30 degrees. Again, before we start the question, let's identify what other forces are also present on the 20 kilogram mass. We have again the weight force acting down towards the ground, and we also have a normal force that acts upwards and perpendicular to the surface. And since the box is moving relative to the flat surface, there's going to be kinetic frictional force that acts opposite to the motion or the direction of the applied force. Now, in this instance, the applied force is at an angle exactly 30 degrees from the horizontal direction. So in order to calculate the net forces in the vertical and horizontal direction, it is important to resolve this force vector into its perpendicular components. By way of review, when you're resolving a vector, the original vector will become the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. And the two other sides of the triangle are your horizontal and vertical components. So we know that this angle here is perpendicular and this angle here is 30 degrees, which means the vertical component is 150 sine 30 degrees and the horizontal component is 150 cosine 30 degrees. Let's first look at the vertical forces. The net force in the vertical direction is equal to all the upward forces, which includes the normal force, as well as the vertical component of the applied force, which is 150 sine 30 degrees, minus the weight force, which is acting downward. All three of these force vectors are in the vertical direction, but the normal force and the vertical component of the applied force are acting upwards, while the weight force is acting downward. And we know that if the mass remains flat and travels horizontally along the flat surface, 
the net force in the vertical direction must be zero. So here, zero equals the normal force plus 75 minus 20 kilograms, which is the mass, multiplied by 9.8 meters per second squared. So normal force equals 121 newtons upwards. What about the horizontal forces? The net force in the horizontal direction is equal to the horizontal component of the applied force, which is 150 cosine 30 degrees minus the kinetic friction, F lowercase k. Now, we know that the kinetic friction is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction, mu lowercase k, multiplied by the normal force, which is 0 0.6 multiply by 121 as we previously found in the vertical forces. So the net force in the horizontal direction is equal to 150 cosine 30 degrees minus 0 0.6 multiplied by 121 which is equal to 57.3 newtons to the right. This concludes the introduction video to forces.